While Superman 64 is normally brought up as the worst superhero game ever released, there are a handful of other games that get routinely mentioned alongside it. While each one deserves to be talked about in their own rights, there's only one other game that draws direct comparisons to Superman 64, and that's Aquaman Battle for Atlantis. Released in 2003 for the GameCube and the original Xbox, and made by Lucky Chicken Games, Battle for Atlantis marked the second time Aquaman was playable in a video game, and the first, and only, time that he would headline a game. Taking place during his mullet and hand harpoon phase, players took control of Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman, as he defends his kingdom of Atlantis and the Seven Seas from Black Manta and the Ocean Master. Aquaman would find himself swimming, brawling, piloting submarines, saving civilians, and defusing bombs, among other things, to keep the peace in his underwater world. Right out of the gate, the Superman 64 comparisons are immediately apparent. The brawling stages are almost exactly like the ride stages in Superman, with Aquaman swimming towards objectives and fighting clusters of enemies in otherwise fairly barren open areas by following a compass in the bottom right corner of the screen. Aquaman controls better swimming than Superman does while flying, being able to turn smoother and generally handles better, but the camera likes to tilt to the side while doing certain movements, which can feel disorienting. The camera is at its worst, however, during combat. When Aquaman finds a group of enemies, he enters combat mode. Aquaman can attack by using his arms, legs, harpoon, grappling hook, and by summoning killer dolphins to take out enemies. There's an underlying counter and combo system with special moves, but most enemies can block or grab you in the middle of attacks, dragging out fights. In combat, the camera has two possible settings. Close, which just puts the camera on the side of Aquaman to resemble a 2D fighting game, and the default setting of Dynamic, which moves the camera around during fights to make them look more visually interesting. Unfortunately though, the dynamic camera moves around a bit too much and can actually reverse your inputs mid-fight, which will mess up your special input attacks. It's not all bad though, since the submarine sections are actually somewhat fun and help break up the monotony. They kind of play like an unpolished Star Wars Rogue Squadron, to the point where the health meter looks almost exactly the same. You have a lock-on special attack and regular blasters, power-ups to collect, and plenty of targets to hit and destroy. There's also a story told through still-frame 3D modeled comic book panels, but somehow the models make the scenes feel a bit lifeless compared to usual DC comic fare. It also doesn't offer a primer on Aquaman's backstory or any of the other characters, so people will just kind of appear and disappear during the game with no fanfare or any explanation about their importance. Battle for Atlantis was far from Lucky Chicken Games' first or last game, but thanks to the internet, it's definitely become their best known. They released a bunch of games before being bought up by Abandoned Mobile in 2005, then they reformed as Galaxy Pest Control in 2010. They're actually still active to this day, having released a game as recently as March 2021, a remake of their Game Boy Advance Robotech game. At the end of the day, Aquaman Battle for Atlantis is just unremarkable more than anything else. It's definitely not a good game, but it's not quite as bad as Superman 64. If anything, it's more of a novelty, an odd experience of a game based on an odd time in Aquaman's life. Which, for a character that's poked fun at as much as Aquaman is, is more than most would expect. Professor Hamilton has escaped the parasite's clutches and hidden himself behind a force shield in the Star Labs. The parasite is trying to catch the professor by raising the water level in the tunnels, find Professor Hamilton, and work together to escape Star Labs and beat the parasite. Behold, water. The most threatening of all objects in this stage, and that is sadly not really a lie. Let's get to it. Then there's no time we to We start waste. immediately by meeting the parasite. Just like in the parkade, I'm not gonna do the bio for him right away because it's just right, right in front of the stage. It's just way too close to the actual intro. Uh, but he does warn us that we only have a few minutes to save Hamilton. So I'll just sum it up this way. Parasite is powerful. Parasite is deadly. Parasite is invincible. And Parasite is dead. Yup, that's all it takes. One box. Let's move on. We have to rush to find Professor Hamilton immediately. 
And we have to do it by running down this tunnel. We do get laser eyes, heat vision here to try to take out this tank, but honestly, doing this is not the best plan, as you can see. It takes a while to kill them, and you take a lot of hits in the process. But, you know, we're through. We've only got one fourth of our health meter left, but we're through. Fly down here, and we can find Professor Hamilton. Punch in the computer code in the next room. It's the only way to stop the water. I'll wait for you here. So he has picked this room here, which has another entrance behind it. Fortunately, that also has a force field. And he's just right next to a submarine with water that is slowly filling up the room. So really, I this is, for being a professor, this is kind of a terrible escape plan. He really, really needs to work on this idea. We've got one minute 40 left. Now, you he says in the next room, so you think to look around and, you know, find another room in this area. Nope, he actually means go back to where you started. Not this room that we just completely ignored. This room. These three computers. These information kiosk looking computers are what you need to interact with. Activate all three. And you'll save him. The water dips back down, and he's fine. If you want to, you can just sit there and watch the water fill up and kill Hamilton. It's a bit messed up. It's really screwed up to do that. But if you do do that, and you reload the stage fast enough, the water effect actually stays in the preview for the actual area because everything loads too fast and doesn't actually erase the old effect. So you can keep screwing up with the cutscene that way. Okay, now that we have saved Hamilton, well, sort of, we've saved Hamilton, but we haven't freed him. So now we have to go actually free him. So let's run all the way back to go talk to him again. Fortunately, they spawn in some super speed there. So you can just enjoy that lovely sound. But now there's actually, ooh. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna stay here for a little bit. Might be safer. I think this might actually be safer. Just ignore, ignore the fact that, you know, that bomb went through a wall and my legs are through a wall and I've definitely dodged numerous explosions this way. And that the camera is very, getting very uncomfortably close to me right now and it's zooming in a little bit too much on Superman's crotch and what is the fuck is happening? Let's get out of here. Oh my god, please. I'm actually gonna die up here. Alright, if you can make it a Hamilton without dying, sometimes he'll talk to you. Thanks, Superman. Now you have to catch the parasite in this force field. Don't worry, it'll work even underwater. Uh, we already killed the parasite, so that's kinda gonna complicate things. We actually softlocked the stage. Sort of. But, in the interest of actually showing the stage properly, Let's go back and load things correctly. Let's do a proper run. But while I'm loading this back up, how about we learn a little bit about Parasite? That's what Rudy Jones can do. Now tell your friends, there's a new Superman in town. Mild-mannered janitor Rudy Jones has a secret, and it's that he's broke. In Dead the Bookies, he helps fence chemicals from Star Labs, but after screwing up a job, he gets doused in an experimental compound in the back of a pickup truck. In one of the honestly more gruesome transformations in the series, his body's mutated and he becomes the Parasite, a being capable of stealing the strength, powers, and memories of any living creature he touches. Think Rogue from X-Men, except with less skin-tight suit and more... Uh, skin. The stolen power eventually fades from his body, however, so he needs to constantly feed on his prey every 12 hours or so to keep his newfound strength intact. For having, frankly, an overpowered ability, Parasite's pretty easily defeated in the series. Usually portrayed as a bumbling idiot, he constantly gets outsmarted by Superman, and in one case, gets his own body taken over by someone he's feeding on. Even though he manages to learn Superman's real identity more than once, 
He keeps getting his mind wiped since he also steals people's weaknesses, which constantly leads to his downfall in a really dramatic fashion. He feels like a punchline at times more than a threat, which is a shame because being able to be on par or stronger than Superman should have led to him being featured more than he was. This might have been just an attempt to soften his image though, because around this time in the comics, Parasite was much more monstrous and mutated looking than he is in the cartoon. Growing fangs and doubling in size, he looked like a savage beast and an actual threat. By comparison, Parasite in the show looks like a luchador. He's just ready to jump off the top rope and take on Superman in a wrestling match. I think it might be because of the stripes. Parasite is voiced by Brian James, an actor who has appeared in an honestly impressive amount of TV shows and movies, including notable movies such as Blade Runner and The Fifth Element, alongside movies with amazing names such as Brain Smasher, A Love Story, and Pterodactyl Woman from Beverly Hills. He sadly passed away from a heart attack in 1999, but due to having filmed for so many movies in advance, he still appeared in seven more movies after his passing. While in-game you have to interact with Parasite a lot in a short amount of time, he's the only boss in the game you never actually have to throw a punch at or hit. Well, Lex notwithstanding. He's actually indestructible and is treated more as a puzzle than anything else. If you want to go through with that sweet, sweet combat, though, by all means, go nuts and hit him. He can take it. Just get ready to be laughed at. Parasite appeared in four episodes of the cartoon. Parasite might be a big threat in the show, but in the game, he's literally a joke. He will attack you, but he'll just laugh at you and then stop attacking you. He just kind of stands around does nothing. As you saw earlier, the crates can kill him. It's the only thing in the stage that can, so it's honestly recommended to not use the crates, but that's the confusing thing. Why are they here otherwise? They actually just screw up the stage for you. Alright, let's go. We gotta do everything all over again, so let's go talk to Hamilton. This time, I'm just gonna... Take the missiles face on. It actually, you take less damage, honestly. It's kind of weird. As you've probably noticed, this stage is very tiny. There's really not much of this stage. It is unfortunately a stage of a lot of padding. It would otherwise be probably the shortest or second shortest stage in the game because this is all that's left, basically. There's a room down in the water we're gonna need in a minute or two, but that's about it. One thing they do to kind of slow you down though is they force you to walk in a lot of areas. However, a lot of these walls can be clipped out of bounds on if you're in the right spot. I'm using the wrong wall. There we go, so we can clip through here. Sometimes it doesn't work right. It's the same trick that we used in the past with boxes. So now we can fly out here and just kind of go wherever we want, but the actual rooms we need are up. You can actually see them off in the distance there. Unfortunately, I screwed up the clip and just went right back in. So we're gonna have to actually run and do this as quickly as possible. We're gonna be cutting this one a little close. So this time around, if you leave Parasite alive, he will run after you and try to stop you. However, if you still don't want to deal with them, there's a bunch of tricks you can do to mess with his logic. My favorite one being just taking the damn elevator. He just kind of stays there. If you position yourself in the right place, he will actually just get stuck in the room with the elevator. Otherwise, you just have to run around and activate these three computers. He will chase you down still, or he will throw a fucking box at me! <laughs> Shit, I've not seen him do that. <laughs> You'll never get past me to punch in those codes. All right, you might have made your point. 30 seconds. We've punched in one, and he's doing a bad job of grabbing me. That's two. Oop, there we go. I guess I know why the boxes are there now. That's all three. They actually do show, if you cut it as close as possible, the water will be as high as possible, which is actually a nice touch, but also makes this cutscene take forever. Wow, 
really does take a long time. And now for some... Oh, he tried again. He tried again. There was another box on my way. Uh, now that you've actually activated all three switches, he does nothing. You'll never defeat me without Hamilton's help. I'm not going to attack you. I'm just going to sit here and shake my arm. That's it. Just shaking my arms. Look really upset. You can push him around. Take him around where you want. He won't do a thing. Want to push him through a wall? Why not? Let's see if we can. Want to go through a wall? No, oh, no. Ooh, they thought of that. You're not going to go through that wall. I'm sure there's other walls I can find, but I'm going to ignore you for now. So, I came back to this later and decided to push Parasite into the elevator. And it turns out, if you do that and take the elevator, he, uh, clips you through the floor. Oops. Let's actually go do something else. You literally cannot do anything else until you go talk to Hamilton again. So go back to Hamilton the second time. Don't fall on the lights this time. Nope, that's better. Hamilton, what do I do this time? Thanks, Superman. Now you have to catch the parasite in this force field. Don't worry. It will work even underwater. That is a not-so-subtle hint that you need to go check in the water. However, the worst enemy in the game is in the water. Crabs. Yep. The worst enemy you will deal with in this game, straight up, are robot crabs. You think I'm joking. Wait till the rest of the proper stages. They're gonna be a pain in the ass. There's so many of them. And routinely, you have to fight them in water, which means slow motion combat. They will overwhelm you in sheer numbers. And routinely glitch through the floor. The one upside to fighting the crab robots, though, is that Superman will actually turn around and, f like, automatically face whoever he's swinging at. So if you're patient enough, and in a good enough position, Superman will just automatically do the work for you, which is a nice change of pace from a game that uh, usually has him doing nothing. Alternatively, keep swinging long enough, the crabs will just dance for you. They won't come into range, they'll just have a nice jaunty dance for you. While I'm slow-mo fighting the crabs, here's footage of them getting stuck in the floor. And here's footage of them getting me stuck in the floor. Because I guess fair's fair after all. Take him out, slow-mo Superman! Perfect. Okay, well, now we can relax for a little bit here. And jump. Jump for joy. One little fun glitch, if you have the super speed still, is try to attack while you're moving. It may be a little hard to do, but you can actually make the sound effect repeat constantly if you do this correctly. But now we found the trap we have to put Parasite in. I can't do it. I have to edit that one in. Damn. Thought I was gonna have them all repeat all in the one video. Of course I'm not gonna get that lucky. Oh, we left. That one crab gets to live. That one gets to live. I'm not even touching that one. Fly back here. If you position yourself correctly, you can actually just fly through, which is way, way faster than walking. So much faster. Okay, so now that we have the trap, now we just have to actually trap Parasite. Parasite is still in that corner. Okay. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. We kind of left him to his own devices. We kind of positioned him where we shouldn't have. Let's go in here. Did he follow us? He sure as hell did. Run into this green force field. Stand behind this computer. And make water splash for some reason. Now the force field is blue. That's it. That's all you have to do. You may have caught me, Superman, but the professor is still trapped. 
and then one of my favorite glitches happens after catching him. He will keep trying to hit you and escape if you are close enough. If you walk away far enough, he mellows out, stops like you think he would. Get close enough, it never ends. If it wasn't for the loud buzzing noise, this would be really cathartic. It looks like he's trying to headbutt his way through. It never works. Unfortunately, you cannot carry the crate into this room to kill him. Or can you? Hang on. How patient are you guys feeling? Out of all the things I tested for this stage, this was the one thing I didn't think of until this recording started. Carry the box physically with you all the way to him. And unfortunately, he'll punch it out of the way. We gave it a shot. I'll try one more, but I don't think we're gonna get that lucky. I don't think I'm gonna be able to position this right, but I'm gonna try. How close can I get before he blows up this box? Oh, damn it. You can fight him if you want, there's no point. You just needed him trapped in there. Oh well. Well, now they don't have to worry about him anymore. How about we go look around the area here? So the rest of this stage is pretty small. We've got these little, I guess, conduits in the back. It, uh... Ignore the explosions. They're not in this room. This whole stage is stacked on top of itself. And so enemies in completely different rooms are active while I'm up here. Because they think they can reach me. Take a little elevator up here. We got a nice little screen that says Superman on it. We can't do anything with it. And we've got this force field that we need to try to get past. Can't do anything about it by running into it on this side. If you run to it on this side, you start a time warp? I don't know how else to describe it. If you can get yourself positioned in a way that it keeps looping you into different positions. There's a very strange hitbox on it. And if you position yourself just right, you can break the camera and uh, Clark's positioning in general. There we go, now we got it. This will just repeat ad nauseum as you're holding forward. I think there's one other stage you can pull this off on. Probably the last stage, but it's... I never quite understood why it does this. I don't know if it's prevention for trying to keep you from clipping out of bounds or what. But it will repeat over and over until you get tired of it. Speaking of out of bounds, this stage has so many ways to get out of bounds. It is disgusting. The easiest one is right here. Position yourself just under this platform as best you can. You may have to walk around a little bit to get it to work, but you will pop your feet down into the ground. Now, you can use this to clip through the wall and get to any room in the area, but if you go straight down, I'm just gonna move a little bit forward before I do this. Guess where you end up? The void, and you've screwed up. Good job, John. Nope. You actually end up in the elevator path down here. They're actually stacked that close together in such a weird way, too. So you can actually use this as a shortcut to get around to get to Hamilton, because you need to talk to Hamilton so many times in this stage if you're doing the stage correctly. You will find the computer controlling this force field upstairs. Use it to set us free. Now that laser field upstairs is gone. Now you no longer need to worry about it. I'm gonna actually fly over here because there is a health pickup in the water and I don't think I grabbed it. I did grab it, I'm in trouble. Ooh. Uh, 
I might have missed the one upstairs. I think there are only two health pickups in this stage straight up. This is one of the shortest stages in the game, like I mentioned before. But if you do the speedrun method, it is actually the shortest stage in the game because, mm, well, no. Oh, wait, hang on. Ooh, did I grab the one over here? This is the other one. It's gone. I'm in trouble. Oh, boy. Okay, let's see what we can do. Oh, no, there is a third pickup. There is a third pickup, and it's actually directly up here. However, I gotta avoid getting shot, which is tricky when they block the damn elevator. Okay, we're good. We're safe. Now we have to walk down this lovely glass laser tunnel. And go to this green glowing computer. The most important looking one of all. And that turns off the force field to save Hamilton. Let's run back here. Now you would think, okay, I gotta take the elevator, I've gotta go or jump off the balcony there. You can just uh, walk through the glass. It's not solid when you're up there for some reason. You can't quite fly through it to get in, which is a bit of a bummer, but there is a trick to actually do that. Positioning yourself by clipping through the wall over here and moving yourself very carefully will let you clip into the platform up there behind the laser wall. Then you can run over to the computer. This will let you skip a couple steps in the stage because at any point you can go activate that computer. If you activate it any time after you've used the bottom three computers, it will actually turn off the force field and you can go talk to Hamilton and end the stage. However, if you do it before you've used the three computers, it will instead count as one of the three computers that you need to use to stop the water from rising. Do that, then go talk to Hamilton, then use two of the three computers to stop the water, and then the third one will become the one that turns off the force field, thus letting you end the stage and letting you completely ignore Parasite. So if you kill Parasite with the box and do this technique, you do not softlock yourself. You fix the softlock. It also lets you finish this stage in less than three minutes, which is crazy. It turns out that speedrunning techniques have actually gotten to the point where a lot of the action stages can be finished in three minutes or less, including one stage being done in less than a minute. And here's the thing I wasn't aware of. Uh, most of the videos... Oh, there's that, there's that sound I was looking for. There's that never-ending speed sound. I'm sorry. I stopped it. Uh, most of the videos that actually show these techniques were posted three to four months after I started this Let's Play. And considering how long this Let's Play has been running, that is crazy. Alec Kermit actually has broken apart most of these stages to a point where most of the techniques that he made are still used in speedruns today. Most of them were in the AGDQ run that happened in 2018. I'm just taking this side entrance just to show how ridiculous this room was that, uh, that the professor locked himself in, but all you gotta do is just uh, walk up to him when the stage ends, or let's see if we can rig this. Sometimes this works. This is a tricky one to do. Grab one of the guys that are shooting at you. Nope, uh, I'm just gonna let that guy fall through the floor. Sure, why not? Yep, that guy's gone. How about you? You wanna, you wanna let this work? Walk up to the professor. Nope, out of range. You can, if you can get close enough to the professor with the explosion, it will stay Superman wins while you're just lying flat on your ass. As you would hope, but I can't chance it anymore because I have no health left. However, instead, due to our positioning, we have gotten the camera stuck. It will try to do a proper 360 loop around Superman as it does for every stage. But the geometry and our and our character model will cause it to start freaking out. It's a lot more prevalent if you actually take the back entrance to the cave uh, to the point where it will actually will break its looping and it will just slam itself around instead and it will actually just completely skip the rotation, but pretend that it still is and fake going back to pretend that it can it loop properly. And with that, we finished one of the shortest stages in the game. 
However, this stage is one of the more important ones. Let's talk about it. First and foremost, let me save my game, because we gotta make sure we save this. Now, if you're playing the game on normal or Superman difficulty, at this point, it will load up the next ride stage, the sixth ride stage. But if you're playing on easy, the game actually ends here. You get this prompt on screen instead. You saved all your friends, Superman, but the subway is still under control of Lex Luthor. Switch to normal skill to access the subway level and help your friends to go back to the real world. This is where things get interesting. Because at this point, you think, oh no, I've screwed up if I've played on easy. Now I need to actually play through the whole game again to get back here. But that's not the case. If you go ahead, go to the difficulty settings and move it to normal. I said, move it to normal. and then click last game. In short time, your fate will be sealed, Superman. It loads up the subway stage. It loads up stage 12. It skips the sixth ride stage completely. This is job for Superman. You're back into another proper stage. Now, if you're playing through on normal difficulty, this is where your game ends. But, if you load up a normal difficulty game... In short time, your fate will be sealed, Superman. You get this prompt. You destroyed all the enemies in the town, but you have to face Brainiac in the hard skill level to bring back your friends to the real world. And you've probably guessed where this is going now. Go down to the difficulty setting, set it to Superman mode, Go to last game. In short time, your fate will be sealed, Superman. And again, you've skipped ahead to stage 14, the final stage of the game. Doing this means you skip two whole ride stages, two full stages of the game. This looks like a job for Superman. But here's the craziest thing about this of all. And this is one thing I've been so excited to talk about for a while, and I'm sad that it's taken me so long to get to this point, because it actually is kind of important if you just casually know about this game. Most people are probably well aware of this at this point, but for those that aren't, easy In mode difficulty, time, your fate will be sealed, while it does Otherwise, start the same, with your friends being kidnapped, Lex talking about virtual world, blah, 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 exactly as you expect. Then there's no time to waste. Easy difficulty doesn't have any rings. There are no rings you need to fly through on the ride stages to get to the next part of the game. All you need to do is follow the compass in the bottom corner. Go find a giant Superman symbol just kind of floating in midair. Yep, this thing. And then just do the actual challenges. You never actually have to fly through a single ring in Superman 64. It's just a hidden feature. A hidden feature to a point where the official video game guide for this game. And yes, believe it or not, this got a Brady Games player's guide. It is a real object. I own it. The player's guide tells you to do this. The player's guide doesn't cover stages 11 and 13 because it uses the easy mode trick. I've been thinking about this ever since I figured this out years and years ago. And I think this is why Eric thought that the game didn't have any rings, but only in the tutorial area. Because all you need to do is just fly around in easy mode. The stages are otherwise the same. You take less hits. 
but you don't have to go through the rings, which makes the ride stages take so much less time. The game has since been speedrun since it's this LP has started. And the time difference between uh, 100% Superman run, having to do on Superman difficulty, and the time difference between doing any percent, which is an easy mode run, is an hour in a speed run. It is a significant difference. If you are ever going to play this game, and for the love of God, why? But if you are, just play the game on easy and use the level select trick. It's just way easier. Like, this stuff still happens. You'll still screw up the minigames. Then there's no time to waste. But the punishment for screwing up the minigames is minuscule in comparison. Instead of having to fly through, like, three minutes of rings, you fly for maybe ten seconds. Get to the challenge zone again and try again. Now, having said that, I will still cover the remaining ring stages because, believe it or not, they actually have different things in them compared to the other ride stages. Even if it's just a minuscule amount of things. So we will still be covering the remaining ride stages. But, just know that if you ever have to play through the game, you can completely skip the rings and those two stages in particular. And I 100% 100% recommend that is what you do. You're cutting out probably at that point 20 to 30 minutes of the game, if not like 40 or 50. But you still already know exactly what to expect and you still get to get to the actual fun parts, the more involved parts of the game. And with that folks, that covers stage 10. So join us next time for one of the, I guess, apparently optional ride stages and our next in-flight movie. See you guys then.